This is just a short little video to explain a concept of migration. So migration is a concept that you'll need to understand for the GED social studies exam. So let's talk about it. What is human migration? Because that's what it's referring to. It's not looking at animal migration, which is what you would need to know about for the science exam. So migration, dictionary definition, is a movement of people from one place to another, usually across a political boundary, for permanent or semi-permanent residence. Um, semi-permanent, that would be something like seasonal movements of migrant farm laborers. People can either choose to move or be forced to move. So if they choose to move, that's voluntary migration. If they're forced to move, it's involuntary. Now there's different scales of migration. So you could have intercontinental where someone moves between continents, intracontinental between countries on a single continent, interregional, which is within the same country. Um, you don't need to know those terms for the GED test, but just for your general information. So a key historical pattern, this you should know, is rural to urban migration. People moving from the countryside to cities in search of opportunities. That's a big theme in not only world history, but also US history. Now the GED exam is not really gonna cover world history. It's gonna focus on US history. But like I said, this is a key pattern in US history as well, rural to urban. <clears throat> there are a bunch of different types of migration. In fact, there are 10 different types. You probably won't need to know all of these, but here they are just so you gain a better understanding of migration. Um, there's what's known as internal migration, where you move to a new home within the same state, country, or continent. External, where you move to a different state, country, continent. You see how that can be different depending on the scale. Emigration is where you leave one country to move to another. You should know that term for your exam. Immigration, this is another term you should know, means moving into a new country. Um, population transfer, that's when the government forces a large group of people out of a region. So in US history, we saw this happen with the Trail of Tears when Native Americans were forcibly moved from where they originated to Oklahoma Territory out west. Impelled migration is where individuals are not forced out of their country, but they leave because of unfavorable situations. So an example in US history would be like the Great Migration where African Americans left the South in huge numbers because of things like Jim Crow laws. They moved up North hoping to find better jobs and better opportunities. Step migration is where you make a series of shorter, less extreme migrations from your place of origin to your final destination. You won't need to know about step migration for the test, so don't worry about that one. Um, chain migration, that's a series of migrations within a family or a defined group of people. Where that comes into US history is with a lot of the immigrants who came to the United States still to this day. One member of the family will come first, Oftentimes it's the dad or like the primary breadwinner and they work in the new country, save up money and then bring the rest of their family. And typically if it's the dad of a family, he'll bring the wife and kids next and then the parents will work together and maybe the kids will work as well and they'll manage to bring the grandparents or maybe aunts, uncles, cousins. Return migration is voluntary movement of immigrants back to their place of origin. Don't worry about knowing that one for the exam. And then there is also seasonal migration. So that's where you move for a period of time in response to labor or climate conditions. Good example is of seasonal migration is farm laborers. A lot of people will move up north just for the picking season and then they'll move back south later. Um, so people who migrate. Emigrant, person who is leaving one country to reside in another. 
like if you left the U.S. and moved to South America. An immigrant, spelled with an I and an extra M, is a person who's entering a country from another to take up a new residence. Like a person who moves from Canada to the USA. So a little memory tip for you. The M in immigrant sounds a lot like the word in, like goes into a new country. So if you say to yourself, immigrant in, you can remember that an immigrant is coming in, an emigrant is going out. Um, you also have refugees. A refugee is a person who is residing outside the country of his or her origin due to fear of persecution. It's so like, you know, a person who flees to Australia. Um, this is not important for the GED test, but this is a phrase you may have seen before, so I'm just going to go ahead and explain it. An internet, internally displaced person, or an IDP, is a person who's forced to leave his or her home region because of unfavorable conditions, but they don't actually cross any boundaries. So like, maybe there's a war and they flee the city they live in, they go elsewhere. IDPs are different from refugees. Refugees have to leave their country, whereas IDPs are still within their own country. In the U.S., we don't really have IDPs as a, as a major group. Um, what we deal with more are refugees. Um, a migration stream, that's a group migration from a particular country, region, or city to a certain destination. We see that in U.S. history. So you had, you know, a bunch of people came over from Europe for various reasons, and they came to the United States. Uh, one specific example, during the potato famine in Ireland, where people were starving to death, millions of Irish people came to the United States. So why do people migrate? There's two major reasons. So you have what's known as push factors. Push factors are reasons for emigrating or leaving a place because of a difficulty. So push factors might be things like food shortage, war, flood, etc. There are also what's known as pull factors. These are reasons for immigrating or moving into a place. So push factors are negative things, pull factors are positive. Pull factors could be things like nicer climate, better food supply, freedom, etc. Laws of migration. <clears throat> so most migrants only travel a short distance. That may be surprising to you, but the most common migrations are short ones. Like last year, I migrated from Mississippi to Alabama. That's a relatively short migration, three hours distance. Migrants traveling long distances will usually settle in urban areas rather than rural. Just kind of a general law of migration. Doesn't mean it always happens that way, just most of the time. Uh, most migrations occur in steps. So, Usually people don't make the big giant move and just stay put. They tend to make a move and then make like a later move and then maybe another one. And most migration, as I said, is rural to urban. That's the biggest pattern. Migration flows produce a movement in the opposite direction known as a counterflow. You don't really have to know about that one for the exam. Um, most migrants are adults. T typically, you don't see a lot of children coming by themselves. Uh, if they are, they're usually refugees. Or in American history, there was a period of time when many unaccompanied minors were coming over as indentured servants. Um, in, in fact, parents would literally sell their children into indentured servitude. So you'd have, for example, Germans selling children as young as five to people they didn't even know. And so the child would be crossing the ocean and then would basically be 
not exactly a slave, but not exactly a servant in their new family. So they basically be treated by, like a slave, but have slightly more rights. That's not so much the case now, though. Uh, and even then, indentured servants where they were children, those were in the minority. Most would be adults. Just an interesting fact, most inter international migrants are young males, whereas most internal migrants are female. So those big moves across countries, those are more likely to be young men. Shorter moves within a country, those are more likely to be females. And migration has an impact to finish us up. So there's a term known as diffusion. Diffusion is the process through which certain characteristics like cultural traits, ideas, or disease spread over space and through time. See, like it, it spread and now you got all these little flowers, the seeds spread. Relocation diffusion is where ideas, cultural traits, etc., move with people and don't remain at the point of origin. You know, like the acorns move with the little creature. Expansion diffusion, that's where ideas, cultural traits, etc., move with people from one place to another, but are not lost at the point of origin. Things like language. And so those things that get left behind are sometimes called cultural markers. Now, of those terms for impact of migration, the only one you really have to remember is diffusion, just the process through which certain characteristics like ideas, disease, language, etc., spread over space and through time. Hope this was helpful.